माइक्रोवेव एंटनास प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन हॉर्न एंड स्लॉट एंटनास सीरीज ऑन एंटनास एंड वेव प्रोपगेशन लेक्चर नंबर 5.21 हियर इन द प्रेजेंट सेशन राइट नाउ वी कंसीडर एंड सॉल्व सेवरल प्रॉब्लम्स सेट ऑन हॉर्न एंटनास एंड slot antennas these problems are mainly concerned with uh, directivity length effective aperture beam width and uh, in case of uh, slot antennas problems are also concerned with uh, impedances let us uh, start uh, the session by considering a problem example 1 this problem is uh, on uh, horn antennas find the flare angle of an optimum horn with length 10 lambda where lambda is free space wave length and delta not is 0.25 lambda what is delta it is path difference between central ray and side ray delta not is optimum value of delta with this understanding let us proceed to solve the problem solution for an optimum horn flare angle is given by this formula theta is equal to 2 cos inverse l by l plus delta not l is length it is given as 10 lambda delta not is given as 0.25 lambda substituting this given values in this expression one can get flare angle as 25 degrees this is the answer 25 degrees another problem example 2 this is also on horn antennas an 8 gigahertz pyramidal optimum horn this is optimum horn pyramidal horn it has mouth dimensions of 16 by 8 cm determine its beam width in both the normal planes and also its power gain this is simple problem standard problem solution mouth dimensions are given as a 16 by 8 cm first one in the given dimensions is width or h plane aperture whereas second dimension is height or e plane aperture pyramidal horn mouth appears like this one dimension is large another dimension is usually smaller one small so it is rectangular in shape the first one is pertaining to width this dimension horizontal dimension this dimension is called h plane aperture h stands for magnetic field magnetic field is in a plane parallel to horizontal that's why horizontal dimension is called h plane aperture whereas height dimension vertical dimension it is called e plane aperture e stands for electric field e is in a plane which is vertical parallel to this uh, narrow wall that's why this dimension is called e plane aperture in the given problem h plane aperture is 16 cm e plane aperture is 8 cm now with this understanding let us move go further the wavelength corresponding to the given frequency 8 gigahertz is 3.75 cm this can be found using the relation lambda equal to c by f c is 3 into 10 power 10 cm per second frequency is given as 8 gigahertz so f is 8 into 10 power 9 it gives wave length as 3.75 cm the e plane aperture ae lambda in wave lengths then is ae lambda is required to find beam width so ae lambda is first calculated here it is 8 8 divided by wave length 3.75 it turns out to be 2.133 the h plane aperture ah lambda 
h plane aperture in wavelengths is h plane aperture divided by wavelength 16 by 3.75 in the present case it becomes 4.26 continuation of example 2 the e plane beam width in degrees is 56 over a e lambda this is uh, a standard formula a e lambda is available we have calculated already its value is available with us substitution in this relation gives us beam width as a 26.25 degrees similarly h plane beam width also can be computed in degrees it is 67 over a h lambda substituting the value for a h lambda in this expression one can obtain h plane beam width in degrees as 15.703 degrees so beam widths are calculated the power gain assuming an aperture efficiency of 0.6 is it is given by this formula 7.5 into a e lambda a h lambda a e lambda is available a h lambda is available so gain can be computed in the present case it uh, turned out to be 68.15 this is uh, absolute value it can be converted into dbs2 in dbs it is 10 log 7.5 into a e lambda a h lambda it comes out to be 18.33 db another problem example 3 find the physical aperture of a pyramidal horn antenna with length l equal to 10 lambda delta equal to 0 0.25 lambda in e plane 0 0.45 lambda in h plane assuming 100 percent aperture efficiency find its directivity if the aperture efficiency is 70 percent what is its directivity here we are asked to investigate how directivity varies with aperture efficiency solution horn length l path difference between end ray and middle ray delta and physical aperture a are related these three quantities are related the relation is given by l equal to a square by 8 delta length of the horn is given as 10 lambda in case of e plane aperture delta is 0 0.25 lambda hence l is equal to a square by 8 delta it gives 10 lambda is equal to a square by 8 into 0 0.25 lambda from this a e can be obtained its value is 4.47 lambda similarly h plane aperture can also be determined 10 lambda is equal to a h square over 8 into 0 0.45 lambda from this relation a h can be found as 6 lambda a e is 4.47 lambda so it gives a e lambda as 4.47 a h 6 lambda gives a h lambda as 6 the physical aperture is physical area and in the present case it becomes ap is ae into ah the aperture is rectangular in shape mouth is rectangular area becomes product of sides ae is one side ah is another side product is 4.47 lambda into 6 lambda it becomes 26.82 lambda square square meters when aperture efficiency is 100 percent physical aperture becomes effective aperture effective aperture is in fact aperture efficiency multiplied by physical aperture when efficiency is 100 percent physical aperture becomes equal to effective aperture both becomes equal now directivity 
standard formula for directivity is 4 pi over lambda square into a e a e is a p which is equal to 26.82 lambda square this one in the denominator lambda square is there they cancel each other ultimately we get directivity as 337.18 this is absolute value in db also it can be obtained converted by applying 10 log to this number in the present case it becomes 25.27 db when aperture efficiency is 70 percent effective aperture becomes 0.7 times physical aperture in such case directivity is 4 pi by lambda square AE. AE is in this case 0.7 times physical aperture which is 26.82 lambda square. Now after simplification we get D as 236.026. In DB it becomes 23.72 DBI. Notice aperture efficiency it uh, has a bearing on directivity if efficiency is more directivity is also more if aperture efficiency is less directivity also becomes less directivity is important hence aperture efficiency is an important factor another problem example 4 a 3 giga hedge optimum rectangular horn is required to give a gain of 14 dbi what should be its aperture area solution wavelength corresponding to 3 giga hedge is 10 cm it can be found using the relation c by f horns are made with good conductors and so their directivities are same as gains losses are negligible when walls of horns are made with good conductors when losses are negligible gain becomes equal to directivity considering this fact taking this fact into account one can write g d b i is 10 log g g in db is 10 log g it is given as 14 in the problem 14 it can be equated to 10 log d g is d as losses are neglected d is 4 pi by lambda square into a e effective aperture so now solving this relation 10 log 4 pi into a e by 10 square equal to 14 solving this relation for effective aperture one can get it as 63.5 cm square 63.57 square cm if aperture efficiency is 65 percent in the problem this information is not given but usually aperture efficiency happens to be 60 to 65 percent for horn antennas if we take it as a 65 percent physical aperture becomes ff2 aperture by aperture efficiency 63.57 by 0 0.65 it becomes 97.8 square cm another problem example 5 find the length l H plane aperture and flare angles theta e and theta h of a pyramidal horn for which e plane aperture a e is 10 lambda let delta is 0 0.2 lambda in e plane and 0 0.375 lambda in h plane as already mentioned delta is path difference between central or middle ray and side ray delta naught refers to optimum value of delta solution from the given values the horn length can be calculated 
using this relation length is equal to a square by 8 delta consider this relation and apply to e plane aperture in case of e plane aperture a is a e which is given as 10 lambda so a square means a e square which is equal to 100 lambda square by 8 into delta in e plane it is given as 0 0.2 lambda so simplification gives us l as 62.5 lambda this is the length now flare angle in e plane it is given by this formula theta e is equal to 2 tan inverse a by 2l this is the formula as we are considering this relation in e plane a becomes a e a e is available it is given as 10 lambda l is available 62.5 lambda substitution and simplification gives flare angle in e plane as 9.1 degrees in the same manner same way flare angle in h plane also can be determined theta h is equal to 2 cos inverse l by l plus delta here the formula is slightly different than the formula we used in finding flare angle in e plane l is available delta is given substitution and simplification gives theta h h plane flare angle as 12.52 degrees continuation and the h plane aperture can be found using the formula a h is equal to 2 l tan theta h by 2 theta h is available length is available a h can be computed a h refers to h plane aperture this is aperture this dimension this is h plane aperture it is found equal to 13.7 lambda now beam widths e plane beam width is 56 by a e lambda a e lambda is given in the problem it is 10 a e is given as 10 lambda therefore a e lambda becomes 10 substitution in this formula gives half power beam width in e plane as 5.6 degrees half power beam width in h plane can be found using the formula 67 by a h lambda a h we have computed it is 13.7 lambda therefore a h lambda becomes 13.7 substituting this value in this expression gives us h plane half power beam width as 4.9 degrees the directivity assuming 60 percent aperture efficiency can be found using the relation directivity is equal to 10 log 7.5 into a e lambda into a h lambda a e lambda is available it is given in the problem a h lambda is available it is found by us 10 log is to have d in dBs. Now simplification gives us d as uh, 30.1 dB. Another problem example 6. This is also on uh, horn antennas. Design an optimum pyramidal horn to give a gain of 32 dBi. To work at a wavelength of 6 cm, the input guide dimensions are 22.86 by 10.16 mm and aperture ratio is AH to AE is 1.3. This is the problem. Solution. Assuming an aperture efficiency of 0.6, directivity is in db 10 log 7.5 ap which stands for physical aperture by lambda square this is directivity in db standard formula in the problem it is given 
as 32. So 32, it leads us to give log 7.5 into AE AH by lambda square as 3.2. It is also given AH to AE ratio is 1.3. So AH is 1.3 into AE. So now we have an equation 7.5 into 1.3 into AE square by 6 square is equal to anti log 3.2. Solving this equation, we get AE as 76.49 cm and AH as 99.44 cm. If it is optimum in E plane, delta becomes equal to delta naught, which is equal to 0 0.25 lambda. With AE equal to 76.49 cm, the length of the horn then can be found using this relation. L is A e square by 8 delta. A e we have just found it is 76.49. Delta is 0 0.25 lambda. And lambda is wavelength. It is given in the problem. Wavelength is 6 cm. So we used 6 here. Simplification gives us a length as 487.56 cm. This is the length when we want optimum performance in E plane. If we want optimum performance in H plane, for H plane optimum, now we calculate the length. For optimum performance in this plane, delta is equal to delta naught which is equal to 0 0.4 lambda. AH H plane aperture is 99.44 cm. We found it. The length of the horn becomes L equal to AH square by 8 delta. AH is 99.44. Delta is 0.4. Lambda is 6. It gives length as 515.02 cm. Now we consider some problems on slot antennas. First problem on slot antennas, it is named as example 7. Find the impedance of a half wave slot whose complementary dipole impedance is given as 73 plus J43 ohms. Also find the input impedance of a folded half wave slot. So we are given a half wave slot. We are also given folded half wave slot to find their impedances solution. Due to their complementary nature, impedances of dipole and slot are related. That relation is given by this form. Zs slot impedance, Zd dipole impedance. They are equal to eta square by 4. Eta is Intrinsic impedance, it is equal to 377 ohms in case of a free space. Hence, the impedance of half wave slot can be found from Zs, Zt product is Zs into 73 plus J43. This is given as Zt in the problem itself. This product is equal to eta square by 4 which is 377 square by 4. From this Zs can be determined. It uh, turns out to be 419.4 with an angle of minus 30.5 degrees ohms. The impedances of folded half wave dipole is 4 times that of ordinary half wave dipole. So for ordinary dipole, folded half wave dipole impedance is four times that of ordinary half wave dipole 73 plus j 43 the impedances impedance of folded half wave slot then can be obtained by using the relation zs zd is eta square by 4 for zd we have to use four times impedance 
of ordinary dipole here if we want impedance of folded half wave slot substitution and uh, doing a little bit of calculations simplifications results uh, in a value of 104.8 at an angle of minus 30.5 degrees ohms for ZS. ZS is impedance of a folded half wave slot. Another problem on slot antennas, example 8. A thin dipole has a terminal impedance of 73 plus J 53.6 ohms. What are A? The dimensions B. The impedance C directivity of its complementary slot. Solution The dimensions of its complementary slot are determined based on two facts. One, length of complementary slot should be same as that of its corresponding dipole. So, whatever is the length of a dipole, that becomes length of the slot. The width of the slot should be twice the diameter of dipole. Thus, length of the slot is equal to that of the dipole. As the dipole is thin, the width of the complementary slot must be negligibly small. So, dimensions part is over. A part is over. Now, B part. Slot impedance. Due to their complementary nature, the impedances of dipole and slot are related through ZS ZD is equal to eta square by 4. Eta is 377 ohms. ZS is slot impedance. ZD is dipole impedance. ZD is available. Eta is available. ZS can be found without any difficulty. In the present case, it is found equal to 392.34 ohms with an angle of minus 36.28 degrees that is b part impedance c part directivity directivity of complementary slot is same as that of the dipole 1.64 even though in the problem it is not given that uh, it is a half wave dipole from the value of the impedance, terminal impedance, it can be assumed that the dipole is half wave dipole. For a half wave dipole, directivity is 1.64. Therefore, slot's directivity is also 1.64. With this, we come to an end of the present session. In this session, we considered and solved several problems which are based on horn antennas and slot antennas. Specifically, the focus of the problems is on beam widths, directivities, apertures, impedances and in case of slot antennas, on complementary nature too. Hope this session is useful to you. We meet again with a new topic in another session soon. Mm -hmm.